Bon a locale, my garden of roses. Let's spend some time talking about how up in arms Washington is over the impending release of the FISA abuse memo. And how quiet this is going to be, relatively speaking, compared to what will be happening once this memo is released, which should be later today. FBI officials, including Director Christopher Wray, have come out yesterday to attack the contents of the memo, stating that the memo omits material facts which skew how the information therein will be received, a statement that comes as hypocritical from an agency who has repeatedly provided material omissions in their investigations both into Clinton's email server and the facts discovered in Comey and Mueller's Trump investigations and most of the requests that Congress has made for that information. This also stands as a contradiction to their original statements that the release of this memo would represent a risk to national security, the argument being made since the House vote to release the memo was passed four days ago. I really do want to know, FBI, have we omitted information that is of national security risk? Or is there information that is of national security risk that's in there and we shouldn't release it? I'd love to know. But Representative Devin Nunez, chairman of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, responded to these allegations, both by addressing the history of material omissions by the FBI, as well as stating later in the day, after reviewing the memo again, that the memo contains all relevant facts on the abuses of the FISA courts under the Obama administration. But the FBI wasn't the only group lashing out at the Im imminent release of this document. Representative Adam Schiff, who announced that the release of the FISA abuse memo, following its vote with chagrin and emotional pleas, created a bizarre allegation against Republicans in accusing them of altering the memo before sending it to the White House which Representative Nunez responded to by stating that other than grammatical fixes to the document, the only alterations that were made to its contents were requested by the FBI and Democrats themselves, making Schiff's allegations seem more than just a little bit dishonest. There is one criticism of the document that is sticking, however. Despite all but the House of Representatives and White House still being ignorant of the contents of the memo, it is alleged that the main accusation that the memo makes is that the FBI and Justice Department relied upon unverified and later disproven opposition research to win a FISA court warrant to wiretap Trump's campaign policy manager, Carter Page, and critics state that the Republicans are basing their entire case on the shoulders of one man, described by these Democrats as sketchy and having Russian contacts, and that they are risking their credibility by doing so. The issue, however, is not whether or not Carter Page is a less than savory individual, even if the accusations the New York Times chose to run with today, regarding a meeting with a Russian diplomat who spoke with Page during the campaign either about finding dirt on Hillary Clinton or the immigration and adoption policy which prevents Americans from adopting Russian children are true. First and foremost, the evidence of false and manipulative use of opposition research in the form of the so-called anti-Trump dossier has never been considered criminal on the part of the Hillary Clinton campaign, despite it being assembled and provided by a foreign spy from an allied nation, just as any dirt obtained on Hillary Clinton from this Russian diplomat would be. And second, perhaps more importantly, Evidence of abuse of the secretive Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court system to obtain wiretapping warrants against an American citizen and unmasking that citizen in records obtained from said wiretaps is directly against the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act and therefore criminal, regardless of the mistakes or misdeeds of Carter Page. We are talking about a crime committed by the Justice Department under the Obama administration. Even if, even if Carter Page spoke to that Russian woman about the possibility of obtaining dirt on Hillary Clinton 
an act no more criminal than Debbie Washerman Schultz speaking to Fusion GPS and British spy Christopher Steele. It was the unmasking of an American citizen who would otherwise be protected from having his name revealed in records obtained under FISA, which calls the use of FISA against a campaign manager in a presidential campaign into question. That is, without question, an abuse of the FISA system. However, Democrats are seeing Russians behind every mailbox and down every alley right now, as repeatedly proven by Maxine Waters' mad rants about being under attack by the Russians after an error on C-SPAN system, which broadcasts to the internet, was interrupted for a few minutes during one of her speeches on the floor of the House with video from Russia Today which C-SPAN's in investigations into the matter showed was the result of an internal routing error of monitored feeds from around the world. Despite this, she has repeatedly stated that the Russians are out to get her, just as every other Democrat and mass media outlet has been doing for now two years. What we're looking at here is a crime, a very serious crime that calls into question the intelligence community and how it operates. This isn't about Carter Page, this isn't about Trump, and this isn't about the Russians. This is about the misuse of the FISA court system to obtain wiretaps against an American citizen, something that FISA is completely they are only allowed to obtain wiretaps against an American citizen in relationship to wiretapping information on agents and possible uh, bad actors outside of the country. If an American re receives a wiretap, they must be considered masked or basically uh, their name has to be redacted from any document to protect their identity in the process of obtaining intelligence on foreign actors. This is why it's the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act and not the Domestic Intelligence Surveillance Act. And yet Carter Page's name is well known because for now, uh, now nearly, a, what, a year and a half, we've been listening to this story with everyone talking about the man whose name came out in these FISA releases by the FBI. And while the Trump administration has reasserted that the only thing that Carter Page and his campaign spoke to about uh, with that Russian woman was uh, her attempts to uh, get the Trump administration to support repealing the sanctions on Russia regarding the adoption of children, uh, the New York Times and many other outlets are still running with this idea that he tried to get information on Hillary Clinton, which may be questionable to some people, may make look the Trump campaign look bad, but it's not criminal, especially since the Hillary Clinton campaign did go out of its way to obtain any sort of dirt they could, whether it was a lie or not, on Donald Trump during his campaign. The sheer amount of hip hypocrisy and the spinning of tales here really bothers me because it distracts entirely from what is most important about this. And that is the secret court to which no one, you know, is allowed to get any information out of without a FOIA request that is verified both by them and by the FBI, and sometimes by, you know, the intelligence community at large, can even see, like, even Congress is prevented from uh, seeing FISA court warrants. These are completely secret and nigh without oversight, without severe amounts of pressure put on by Congress and the American people, mind you, to obtain this information. And even then, it comes in the form of heavily redacted documents. And yet, we didn't get heavily redacted documents with regards to the wiretaps that were placed on Carter Page at Trump Tower during the campaign. And at this point, both Carter Page and President Trump 
were just citizens. They were not civil servants and not subject to slightly different rules. No, these were American citizens and they had every right to have their name redacted if left out of the investigation altogether as this diplomat would have to have contacts and support from the Russian embassy or Russian consulate rather and wiretapping there would obtain just about the same information just as wiretapping this diplomat directly would however they didn't wiretap this we don't have any evidence I should say that this Russian diplomat was wiretapped directly no the information we have is that the wiretaps were used against an American citizen and if they were used against one American citizen, how many more is the question we're left with? This is a large problem. This is a problem that no one wants to address directly in the Justice Department, in the FBI, on the Democratic side of the aisle, and everyone is trying to just play manipulative word games in order to distract from the fact that we don't have freedom from being spied upon by our intelligence communities. I cannot wait until this memo is released because once it is, I am going to be going through detail by detail and breaking down direct sources that have been leaked, that have been shown, going through the WikiLeaks that cor corroborate, going through the uh, leaked FISA court details that exist out on the internet and we are going to have quite a show for later today. But for right now, thank you for listening, and I will catch you next time. Mm -hmm.